It's an August weekend, and lured by the possibility of sun, sea and sand, thousands of visitors are descending on Studland. With little accommodation in the village, most visitors come for the day, and very few of them arrive on foot. We need people to come to Studland because the money that they bring into the site helps us with our conservation work. Um, and also pays to repair the damage that these people have caused as well. So it's a double-edged sword, really. But uh, Sutherland is like a honeypot site. It is a, you know, an area where people won't stop coming to. They always want to come here. Whether it's being recycled or compacted to go to landfill. The National Trust has to pay to dispose of each kilo of litter people leave behind. It's the biggest single cost of running the site. As people leave the beach at the end of the day, there's always a lot more litter that hasn't found its way to the bins. And that costs even more to collect. Instead of fighting the natural processes, the current strategy at Studland is to move or roll back buildings and infrastructure when necessary. It's called a managed retreat. Views have changed. We certainly have a policy of not putting any more sea defences in or any barriers to the erosion because frankly at Studland it just wouldn't work. If it didn't erode in the area where the sea defence was and they weren't undermined, it would certainly erode more further up the beach. So it, it just isn't any point in doing it. And that's basically our policy, which is managed retreat. So we're looking at the areas that we have and trying to um, move back our infrastructure in line with the rate of erosion as well. And one group of users directly affected by the policy of managed retreat are the beach hut owners. They've had beach huts in Studland for nearly 50 years. And today, there's just under 300 spread out at different locations on the coast. As well as being an important part of the character of the beach, the huts are also a major source of revenue. 